This is a show about jewelry, why we wear it, why it matters, how it's made, and what it means. I'm Alex D, and I turn cannabis into gold. I make mind-blowing jewelry in gold, silver, and platinum from cannabis plants here in Canada for stage, screen, for people who want to rock crazy jewelry. I'm the Cannabis Goldsmith. Working on bling for animals. Let me take off this bomber jacket because it sounds like I'm wearing a snowsuit. If you're not uh, from North America, you won't know what that means, but it's like a suit that, that sounds like when you walk or you do anything, it makes the sound. And bombers, bomber jackets do that too. So let me just take that off. There it is. All right. So I'm here at the bench. I've what I've done is I've hooked a microphone up on top of my bench, so that while I'm working here, I can talk to you and record. And the reason is, is that it's really, really hard. See, it's weird being a creative where you want to you wanna make creative shit like an artist, but then you have to podcast it after and talk about it because the both skills don't seem to match all that well. I know there's some artists that, out in the uh, podcastosphere who, who have amazing art podcasts. They can do this. They can talk about art and actually do art at the same time. So that's what I'm going to try and do here. I'd be working at the bench for hours and then creating a, a piece and then thinking, fuck, you know, why didn't I record it? I've recorded video while I work, but I, I really don't like doing that because you, you, you know the camera is on. And it, it interferes, I think, with the way things are working. Anyway, if you didn't hear the intro, the story on this show, The Cannabis Goldsmith, I'm a jeweler here in Canada. I work in the uh, Thousand Islands area and in Toronto, where our pieces are, are cast in precious metal. I design them here in the design workshop in the Thousand Islands area, Ontario. But the hot metal shit happens in Toronto. But what this show is going to be about is about jewelry. I want to talk about animals. Pet bling, animal bling, animal jewelry. I mean what it can be. You hear me filing away here? I am still working on a massive chain that I started working on, I guess two days ago. I'm, I'm filing links down so they're all the same. But anyway, let me talk about pet bling. Like a lot of you have had the, the joy, the opportunity of having a pet, a dog, a cat, a dog. I think of dogs mostly. I always wanted a dog, but my parents would never let me have a dog. So my whole life, I'm an old guy now, so my whole life I never really, I never had a dog. And then I was moving around and didn't, couldn't really get a dog. And then there were times in my life when I was such a fucking disaster that it's lucky I never had a dog because I could hardly take care of myself, let alone a critter. About dogs, I like I didn't know anything about pets, really, until I had a girlfriend, and she had a small Boston Terrier. Um, it was just like you could fit it in your hand, basically, when we first started going out. And, and then as 
we were together, this dog grew up, and I sort of got to watch it, this dog, Dexter, how he kind of, how he grew up and, and how he became a personality in, its, in his own right, how he became a soul. So I, I discovered that pets have souls. I mean, I sort of knew that, but like I knew they had personalities. But uh, uh, you have to be really, really close to an animal to, to actually see it. And I did, and I thought it was really amazing. So every, every animal has its own soul and personality, and this is what I think. When considering jewelry for your, for your furry critter, keep that in mind. I started thinking, when we started working with cannabis plants, I started thinking, okay, all these giant dogs, you would see in the High Times magazine or, or in these magazines, these pot magazines, High Times is the Bible, but these other mags you'd see, you know, some dude in his field with this giant dog sitting next to him, or, or, or on Instagram you'd see all these guys in California with their giant dogs, and I was thinking, you know what, these giant dogs are there protecting fields or whatever, protecting the owners of the fields, they need something really good, so I'm... I designed um, some dog bling out of cannabis buds. I mean, people are doing making cannabis bud jewelry now, but we were doing it years ago, and we call them dog buds. We custom make them for for dogs out of cannabis buds, and engrave them with the dog's name and like all that. But I, I was thinking about dogs and animals and their personalities and their characters like i mean it doesn't have to be a canvas bud i mean your dog likes pork chops i mean make them a small pork chop and sterling silver you know maybe they're called pork chop make them a small pork chop that's what i would do i mean your dog like your dog is is you your dog your cat is a is, yeah, I mean, it's an extension. They're an extension of you. They're a rep. They're repping you. That's what I'm thinking. So that when we, we when I invented our dog buds, I was thinking, you know, dogs fucking deserve some good quality custom-made bling. Not this shit coming out of mass-produced factories, you know, like the dog bone. Name tag. Never put a dog bone name tag on your dog. Unless it's custom made. Or unless, unless, of course, unless that's all you can afford. Then your dog will forgive you. I've seen dog bling with gemstones, and I've seen dog bling without gemstones. I've seen little frilly dog blings. I've seen big chunky dog blings, like ours. So I, I was thinking, you know, well, like, let's, let's make it different. God, your pet deserves better. And I'm sure I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not the only person to feel that way about their, their friend, their furry friend. But our bling, my bling I make, um, currently make, is the cannabis buds that we cast in different precious metals like gold or silver. Um, they're real buds, and then we cast them in precious metal, and they become uh, dog charms, cat charms too, some people use them for, or they can put them on keychains, but they're, they're meant to be animal bling. And uh, that's the way I like to think about it. But lately I've been thinking about other pieces we could design for animals. I've I've got um, some leaves I'm working on. Now we make I make different leaf uh, cannabis leaf, live cannabis leaf products. We we get a live cannabis leaf and and cast it in precious metal uh, for for shoe jewelry and for uh, you know different types of jewelry that we make. But I'm thinking I might do that for a 
puppy to a small cannabis leaf folded over maybe as a as a bling now granted your dog your dog may not be a weed user consumer but if you are don't they'll, they'll like they'll think it's totally sick that you uh you got them wearing a a cannabis bud but as for themes for bling like you know the people who go to the the get the dog bone that's been stamped out of aluminum in China by the quadrillion and they pay whatever five bucks for it or ten bucks this goes on their on their dog on their critter I'm thinking no 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 stop get them something special so I was thinking I was thinking actually a lot over the course of the pandemic I've been listening to um, I've been listening listening to a fair amount of music but I've been watching a lot of DJs on Twitter be pre Elon of course but Mark Farina in particular and Mark Farina has cats he's a cat dude also a hell of a good DJ but he's been posting sets and then pictures of his cats and, and shit. And I was thinking, you know, I'm going to one day make, see if I can get Mark, one of Mark Farina's cats to, uh, to test pilot some cat bling. You know, I have an idea for a piece of cat bling that would be just absolutely ideal for Mark Farina's cats. Um, little mushrooms little bells where the stem is the the ringer and the cap is the bell mushroom cat bells if you uh, know mark farina he does the mushroom jazz series of of music uh, compilations that are fucking amazing um but yeah mushroom cat bells this is an idea i had so we already make 14 karat gold psilocybe mushrooms here so I could probably convert one into a bell okay is this filing driving you crazy oh because uh, if everybody is like oh my god it's a great podcast except for the fucking filing noises and then I'll have to stop filing but I have to tell you it's nice talking to you while marking because I mean, it can be a it can be a, a long process to like, like I've been working on this chain now for days. Like it's huge. It's a huge, huge, huge silver chain. It's huge, like 24 inches long or whatever, and massive links. Like, like you would use on a bicycle. You know, like just giant, fucking things. But it's gonna be beautiful. But each link has to be addressed individually. Uh, so they all kind of fit together in the end the right way. Um, but anyway, back to animal bling. Like, your your animal, your pet, your friend has a personality. And I think the, um, the bling should reflect that, you know? I mean, uh, when I was thinking at first about those giant pit bulls guarding fields, I mean, big buds around their neck would, would be, it wouldn't be... Um, a stretch of the imagination and would actually work really well on a dog like that and but yeah but not all dogs that wouldn't suit all dogs for example like I know another dog um, Higgins who was like this Brussels Griffon he's a tiny little fucker he's like I don't know fit him in your hand basically but he has this perpetual like he has this perpetual displeased expression on his face he's actually actually just fabulous he's a fabulous dude but he looks like when it, your first impressions you know first impressions happen with dogs too because i mean uh, higgins you look at him and you think fuck what is he pissed off at you know he's pissed off at everything but he's not really that's just the way he looks but anyway a dog like that you need something art deco for a dog like that you know something very sophisticated or a giant diamond or something, you know, that would be like sick on a dog like that. Because he could rock it, right? Like, he'd rock it. But this is not something you would put on a wiener dog, um, a big diamond or or an art deco piece. 
Um, you would have to go uh, uh, go in other directions with wiener dogs. That's, that's, pet playing is a whole world. And we are just scraping the surface. Or filing it down. So I had this idea of, you know, thinking about DJs and stuff. I used to pu publish a DJ culture magazine called Tribe in Canada for over a decade. In the 90s, we covered the rise of house music in Canada and the rise and fall of the rave scene. It's really exciting. So I know DJs a lot. I know a lot of DJs, and I know... I love DJs. I'm, I used to DJ when I was a young man myself. I was thinking dog bling and DJs and kind of weaving them together. I was thinking of making a bunch of small ghetto blasters for dogs. Um, you know, modeled after the famous ghetto blasters of of days gone by. But not not necessarily... Um, 3D ghetto blasters, like a flat, say a flat plate of silver, if you can imagine that, a flat piece of silver cut out in the shape of the face of the ghetto blaster, and then the the, the face of the ghetto blaster um, burned into it, like like yeah, engraved into it, but not not 3D, not thick, um, because it's it's a dog, right? So. I mean, you could go full blaster if you want it, but it depends on your budget, I guess. But here, that's the beauty of the custom work that we do. It's like we can do whatever. We can make shit amazing. So yeah, as I talk to you, I am I'm filing little chain uh, links for a chain. They're not little. They're but each one is about the size of a wedding band. And I'm filing off the tops, the little areas where the silver flowed into our custom link mold. So when it flows in, there's a little bit on the end that you have to file off and smooth out. And that's what I'm doing. It takes a lot of time. It's time consuming. I could rush it with a machine. I'm not going to do that. We're not. We're not in a rush. It's minus 10 out now. Winter. Christmas has passed. And I'm just going to make this as best as I can fucking be. It's looking good now. You could think bigger than the, the little bone, the bone stamped out of aluminum or the little tag. Um, stamped out of aluminum you know get them a get them a pendant out of silver or something like that get them something classy they deserve it you know when it when i first launched the dog buds for a tribe it was like i seen these guys running these huge growing ops and and with their big huge pet balls and i was saying look man your dogs are like your dogs are keeping you safe they're they're working they're working hard reward them give them something really fucking nice like something sick you know even if the dog the dog can't conceptualize jewelry they know you've done something for them that is above and beyond because that's how they are with you. Now, when I speak about dogs all the time, I could mean other critters too, but I don't have experience with them so much. So, so apply my my logic to your your animal of choice. So yeah, my experience with with dogs is limited, but I, I it was it's enough to allow me to design products for them all right we've got almost a half an hour of filing by now you, you're getting the idea of how uh, what it <laughs> what's involved in jewelry making lots of filing lots and lots of filing 
lots of sanding, more sanding, more and more sanding. So you'll be hearing a bit of that, but I'll be talking too. So hopefully we'll get through it together. Now, let's see. Next, how many links have I done now? One, two, three, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, twenty. Jesus, not even halfway there yet. So yeah, so the the blings we're we're working on for animals now. We we produce dog buds. I make dog buds. It's a regular product that I make. Um, and you can find out about them at tribe.ca slash dog buds. I make them in three sizes. I thought, you know, there'll be small dogs, like tiny little dogs with no neck to hold them. Uh, so that'll be a small size. And it's sort of intermediate dogs, like, I don't know, wiener dogs or whatever size. Um, you're kind of your average dog and then a large size for those giant pit bulls that guard the fields and uh, um, protect yeah, big German shepherds and so the large bud is large and, and quite heavy it's been super cold up here today like really cold it was like minus 15 this morning and I just moved to a colder area of Ontario, I think, or in the Thousand Islands area, where I can do design and record podcasts. But I had no idea how cold it can get here suddenly, too. It's so weird. It was like room temperature a couple of weeks ago, and then now it's like minus 10. Just whoosh. This is the time to do this this work. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Back here in the studio. And no more filing for a while. You know, but while I was at the bench in the workshop doing those links, I had an idea. Why not make a cat bud? So I'm going to you you're you're hearing about it first right now. The unveiling, the launch of the new cat bud design, which is essentially our small dog bud, and I've taken some of the weight off it. Silver is heavy. Uh, the metals we work in, the precious metals, are heavy. We, we're always battling that issue as designers working with precious metals. It's it can add up. So I don't want to burden your cat with um, a bud that might be too a little bit too heavy. So I drilled out the the inside of the small dog bud to lighten it up a bit. And I think um, I, it's just it's just excellent. It's like yeah, it has the appearance of a full bud, but is a little bit lighter for the cat. So Cat Bud by Tribe. We're the cannabis goldsmith up here in Canada. We do custom work. We make custom jewelry out of the cannabis plant. We take live cannabis plants and cast them into gold, silver, and platinum jewelry for stage, screen, or just because you want to wear crazy jewelry. That's why we're here. What I'm working on today in the studio um, is an amazing pendant, a hip hop size pendant. It's like three inches across. It's a live cast from a cannabis plant that we've got growing in the studio. So I took off the very top of it and of the sprout and the leaves, the very the the very topmost part of the plant, not the cola before the colas even form before all that. This is just the vegetative stage of the plant, so it's growing towards the sun, or in this case, towards the light that's in the in the tent. But it's seeking energy, and I just snip the top off, and and okay, don't 
don't send me emails about that. This is good for the plant because it encourages it to grow wider, and this is what I want it to do. But I took the took the top of it off, and this is the top that I I cast in, in sterling silver. And I took one of the leaves and made a bale and attached that to it. So it has an integrated leaf bale. It's like pretty. It's a crazy design. But what that means is that you'll be able to string. A, a necklace or if you have a chain that you um, a chain you have already you can just just thread it through this huge loop and wear it um, but it's heavy so you're gonna need a pretty heavy chain to wear this this sucker it's gigantic anyway inspired by the 1980s giant hip-hop pendants um, and and made out of cannabis leaves cast live and they they just you can see the life in them and this is just it's just beautiful i'm also gonna i think i'm gonna make a belt buckle out of the same design and sterling silver but anyway so that's that's what's been on the on the workshop today on the bench and in the upcoming shows i know i said i would be doing seeds earlier but i mean there's so much going on there's like the davos of a fashionistas is happening soon the the Met Gala. Now, Karl Lagerfeld is the theme of this. So, I don't know Karl Karl wore jewelry, but he wasn't so much known for it. Um he was more known for clothes, clothing design. I'm sure he did design jewelry and th there might even be pieces there. Uh I'll have to do some research on that. But anyway, it's the Met Gala, the Davos of fashionistas. And it's it's kind of a Vogue magazine charity thing, you know, the dying embers of the uh, of the fashion magazine industry. Uh, but but it, it raises money for a good cause. But this is this is ground zero for fashionistas. So we'll see. I mean, it's post pandemic. We'll see. We'll see what appears. At the Met Gala, so I'm definitely going to be reviewing the jewelry at the Met Gala. I'm going to be looking at images from that and and uh, reviewing it. And then, if that wasn't all, I mean, there's there's the Academy Awards is coming up too. But but that's that might be some that's more like rental jewelry stuff. It's more like oh, um, the the jewelry brand goes to the store and says, wear this, right? It it's not. But anyway, I we might get to, to see some good designs. It's nothing to do with the stars. We might get to see some good designs, hopefully. And and if that's not enough, I mean there's still and there's more. And there's more. The most epic event of all. The most epic jewelry event of all is the king's coronation. King Charles is getting crowned and for a coronation they bring out the heavyweight jewelry now now this is this is an empire this is a this is this is jewels acquired over the course of like a long time uh, and and this was the jewels acquired as an empire so there's some there are some pieces in this that are just mind-blowing so we're going to be reviewing that. We're going to be talking about. There's literally books written on these pieces. So uh, the it depends what he'll be wearing at this. Though the, the the what I'm interested in. I mean, there's just so much, and I'm sure at the event people are going to be wearing all the craziest jewelry they own, like the most expensive, most ridiculous shit ever. But but what I'm interested in is what he will be wearing in the official photograph because that's that's the image people will always see like um of of him right like when when queen elizabeth was around on when she was crowned her coronation photograph she's there with the crown the scepter the orb all these different um these different jewelry accessories and each of them has uh, meaning and 
each of them is is made by jewelers and each of them is designed and often repaired and and uh, resized or remade they might some things might be remade for this or reconfigured or or whatever so we're going to find out all that stuff and bring that to you um so those are there's are like huge jewelry events coming up and we're going to look at it i'm i'm going at it as a curious just a curious dude i i'm i'm interested in jewelry and 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 that's that so hopefully i if you're coming along for the ride we can enjoy it together anyway that's it for me it's it's late 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 right now so i am going to get right to the end credits The Cannabis Goldsmith is produced by Tribe Communications, Inc. in the Thousand Islands area of Ontario, Canada. Follow us online at tribe.ca. The .ca stands for Canada on the web. Follow us on Instagram at T-R-I-B-E-D-O-T-C-A. Send me an email, alexd at cannabisgoldsmith.com. Tell a friend or two about this podcast. If you have a friend who's interested in jewelry, wants to know more about precious metals in jewelry or gemstones or any of that kind of shit as it relates to jewelry or what the hip-hop stars are wearing or what the movie stars are wearing or what's being worn at the Met Gala or the Grammys, Subscribe to the Cannabis Goldsmith. We're your friend in the business. Anyway, I'm going to get back to work here because I am making amazing pendants out of live cannabis leaves cast in sterling silver. And these are like art pieces, like works of art in like a belt buckle or a large hip hop sized pendant to give you the idea of where I'm going with these. Uh, I'm posting pics as I work to my Instagram stories and more permanent pics are going into the Instagram account itself and importantly at tribe.ca, which is our home base. Have a good week. Think about gemstones. Think about jewelry. If you're out and around, look at other people's jewelry. Look at what they're wearing. Notice it. I mean, that's the mission. That's the the uh, homework this week. It's just to it's just to notice other people's jewelry, to see what they're wearing, if they're wearing anything. I mean, look for unusual shit, not just wedding bands that everybody wears, but look to see if they're wearing anything unusual. And if they are, ask them about it. That's it for me. I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs>